Let's have the same example, which is if a cat is healthy and not injured, then it has four legs. And I'm going to go with negation. If I negate P, that would result in Q. So the antecedent, it's still the negation of P. The consequent is Q. So let's put it in words. I'm going to negate whatever I see in P. Everything that's there will get not added to it. In other words, we are going to go to the go for the opposite meaning of what we have. So I'm going to write it as if a cat is not healthy or unhealthy. I'm going to go with the not part because you can understand negation better. And convert injured to its opposite, excuse me, not injured to its opposite, which would be injured. So if a cat is not healthy and injured somehow, then it has four legs. Mind you, all I'm doing here is coming up with a statement um, that would correspond to um, not P implies Q or, or results in Q. So what I'm trying to say is if not P, then Q. Well, if not P, then Q would result in if a cat is not healthy and injured, then it has four legs. Now we want to know if the result of that statement is true or not. So to answer the question, would this be a valid statement or not? In this case, it is not a valid statement. Because we are saying that the only way a cat would have four legs is if it is not healthy and injured. That's not true. A cat always has four legs. If I changed this to, if a cat is alive and well, then it has four legs. In practice, I can't take a, I can take a statement such as that, um, right, okay, P is connected to Q, but of course, one person or someone might disagree with the notation that I wrote and say, you are wrong. So the purpose of this section is to demonstrate how we represent things in logic. So when we write P, right arrow Q, we are saying, if P, then Q. It has to be a proper condition. Oftentimes the confusion comes where when I write P, if P, then Q, then it is the golden standard. It is written in stone. Um, that is not true. I'm writing if P, then Q. But by all means, that could be an incorrect statement. Do we follow? Okay. We can express a conditional statement in different ways. 
Um, first, we know when I write P, write arrow Q, I'm saying if P, then Q. But that also means Q would happen if P is true. So one can say Q if P. The next two cases um, right here, P is sufficient for Q. If the condition is satisfied, then Q would happen. So if P is sufficient in the sense P is satisfied, then Q will be true. So we can call if P then Q equivalently, or we can mention it equivalently as P is sufficient for Q. The next case is rewrite or writing it as Q is necessary for P. Well, if I have a final result, it better depend on an initial condition. I like to think of it this way. If I started with P, right arrow Q, in other words, if P, then Q, P is the sufficient part. And if I just got rid of Q, it just disappears, there is no Q. Would that statement make any sense? Absolutely not. Where is that P going? P goes to nothing. So the way I like to think about writing a necessary condition is Q has to be there for P to go somewhere. So Q is missing in the second case. So Q is necessary for Peace.